Hello world, I'm Nick Proud and in this video I'm going to talk about P-Invoke. It's going to be an introduction to what P-Invoke is, how you can use it, with some examples of its execution. But before we start talking to native libraries and unmanaged code from our managed.net ecosystem, please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. So without further ado, let's get into P-Invoke. So if you're watching this video, there's a very good chance that you haven't actually come across P-Invoke before or you haven't used it in your day-to-day -day work. And it's quite an advanced area of C-sharp in the sense that it's dealing with what we call unmanaged code. So in .NET, we're working within a managed code infrastructure or a managed code ecosystem where we are quite lucky to have the garbage collector clearing up after us any unreferenced variables that we have they're being cleaned away so that the system can be nice and optimized without us having to intervene too much other languages like c and c don't have this kind of luxury they're much more low level although c is very object oriented just like c sharp but you can get yourself into a lot of trouble with c and c because you're obliged to clean up after yourself in c and c you have to be really careful to make sure that you're managing your resources. You don't have a garbage collector cleaning up after you. There are some performance benefits to working in C and C++. You can put more effort into optimizing your code. And also the garbage collector can present quite a significant overhead on top of what your code is executing already. So what if we wanted to execute unmanaged code from C Sharp? Well, this is where pinvoke comes in. Using pinvoke, you can take existing DLLs that are on your machine and access the code within it from a managed runtime. Now I'm going to use the example of the Windows native libraries. And as we know, Windows is made up of lots of DLLs which control the operating system. It could be the, the kernel, it could be in this uh, example I'm about to show you, uh, things around the user environment. But they're all contained within these dynamic link libraries or DLLs which have unmanaged code and using pinvoke, we can do what we call interop. Interoperability is about the communication between two very different systems. And native interop, which is what we're looking at with pinvoke, is where we speak to the Windows native libraries that control the operating system. So you can see on the screen behind me, we've got an example from Microsoft about how you can target the user32 DLL, which should be on your machine if you're running Windows, and you can use pinvoke to call the message box function. The message box function is responsible for displaying a message box. And so I'm gonna dip into this example, I'm gonna write it out into the IDE, we're gonna execute it and step through the code and see what's happening. But before we start writing any code, let's take a look at the actual function that we're gonna be calling, and that is the message box function. Now, you can see here, this is the documentation for message box, and just like in C-sharp, we can see the syntax that's required, what the return type is, so in this case, it's an integer, and the different parameters that we pass through. And we're going to call this in just the same way, but the only difference being that we're calling it from C Sharp. When we're calling message box, we can add an optional HWND or HWND parameter. This is the handle uh, that we, for the window that we want to pass through. And in Windows terminology, a handle is a reference to a parent window. So as it describes here, if you don't pass through a handle, then you're saying that the message box does not have a parent window. A handle, think of a handle like a link to a window. The second parameter that we have is also optional. It is the LP text. Essentially, this is the uh, the message that needs to be displayed. And you can see uh, the documentation for that here. You can pass through a carriage return or line feed character between each line if you want to separate those out. And then we have another parameter here, which is also optional, LP caption. And that will be the title that shows at the top of the dialog box that we're displaying. And then we do have one required parameter here which is the which is the u type and that is expecting uh, an unsigned integer it's kind of like a flag so you can see some variations here or some examples of the different flags that you can pass through to indicate certain behaviors in this case which uh, buttons should be displayed or things that should be displayed in general on the message box. So for example, if you pass through just an MB OK, which is this uh, uint code, then the message box would just show one push button, which is OK. And that is the default. So if you don't pass this through, I think it would just display or assume that you were sending through this type. 
But if you send through, for example, the top one, MB abort, retry, ignore, you'll see three push buttons, abort, retry, ignore. So you can see the documentation here is giving you some insights into what you can pass through uh, to the library or to the function if you want to display certain things on the message box. And the same for icons as well um, and various other options. You can also see the return value that was sent back. We're expecting an integer. So our function, like in the example that you briefly saw and the one that I'm going to write out, you'll see that it returns an integer. But it's important to note that this is the documentation seen from the perspective of someone who is writing C++ code. And we're not writing C++ code. We're calling into it using interop. What I'm interested in is the library in which this lives. So if you look at the bottom of the documentation for any of these functions, you'll see the requirement section. And in this requirement section, you can see a library and DLL. And I think DLL is the one that we want to look at because it tells us that this is in the user 32 library. And that's important because it means that in C sharp, we can target that DLL and use P invoke to import the contents and call a specific function. So let's do it. So I have my trusty console app and this app simply is gonna be a means of me running a pinvoke function uh, as an example. So I'll take the example first that they were showing on the Microsoft Learn website where we call the message box function. And so when we're using pinvoke, the first thing we want to do is to define an extern function. So this is something that represents the function that we're calling into. And that requires us to target a specific DLL. So if you remember from the last page from the website that I was just showing you, we saw that the user32 DLL is where the message box function lives in that native library. So we need to import that DLL. Now in C Sharp, there's an attribute called DLL import, and we can use that to target this specific DLL. To do this, I'm going to start with uh, square brackets. I'm going to say DLL import. And you can see in the IntelliSense here, it says that, in, that this indicates that the attributed method is exposed by an unmanaged dynamic link library, DLL, as a static entry point. So we're decorating a function that we're about to write, which is representing that function we're calling into. Now this attribute takes parameters, so I can pass in the name. So DLL name is user32.dll. And then I can start naming other parameters. Now, the main ones that I tend to go for, or are in this example actually as well, are char set. So we can say that the char set is char set .unicode. And that should be everything we need for our attribute. Uh, but obviously you can see here that the attribute is still showing as red because it doesn't actually have a function that it's attached to. It's not attached to a function. So I'm gonna create one. I'm gonna make a private static and then I'm going to use the keyword extern. So extern is a modifier that says that the function we're defining is actually defined externally. So here I'm going to match the name of the function we're calling, so message box. But also I need to put a return type. And um, if you remember, we're returning an integer. And then I'm going to put in the types that are compatible with the types that are being um, that are expected on the native library side. So there was a handle, which in this example can be used with int ptr. And then we've got strings for the LP text. We've got a string for the LP text, LP caption. And then if you remember as well, we were expecting to send in a uint, which is u type that will define the kinds of things that are shown on the message box. And also there's a typo there. It should be capital W. So I've matched the function parameters that are expected. So now it's as simple as calling that function that I've just defined. And then that function will then map into perform the interop to the function in that native library. And it will return back into the managed code environment that I'm working from. So I can simply call it if I want to. I don't necessarily want to see the result, but I could do that as well. And then I can pass in the parameters. So I could do in pointer dot zero. And then I could put for my text, I could put um, something happened. Please investigate. And then for the caption, I'd put um, fatal error. Let's be crazy. And then I'll just select and then I'll just put a, a zero for the last one for that U type. 
So then if I run this, it should call in and then display the message box that I'm expecting. And there you go. So I've called into user32.dll and from C-sharp, I've called that native message box function. If I assign this to a variable, I should get an integer back. So if I, I'll just debug this line, step over it, dismiss the message box and then look at result and you can see it returned a one. So you can see very simple example. Obviously there will be much more complicated use cases and more complicated examples. Um, but let's, let's do another one. I'm gonna do one which is in a different DLL. Um, and this time we can look at how we can handle errors that might surface or that might occur during interop. So let's get rid of this function that we've created, clear out the main entry point so we can start from scratch. And this time I'm gonna call uh, something in a different library. So the library that I'm calling into is this one. It's kernel32.lib, or sorry, kernel32.dll. And you can see at the top, we're gonna to be calling the create directory w function. So this just creates a new directory. And yes, I know .NET can do this in the system.io namespace, uh, but this is for the sake of an example. Um, we're just gonna be creating a directory using the native Windows libraries directly. And what we expect to happen is that a folder appears in the specified path. So this time I'm gonna start with my function. So private extern, and this time as well, we're gonna be returning a Boolean. I'm gonna call it the same name as the function we're calling. And then we're gonna pass in the same parameters that are expected as per the documentation. In this case, I just wanna pass in the path name, which the documentation states it is LP path name. And then to make this usable, I'm gonna decorate it with a DLL import attribute. So it's kernel32.dll, charset is charset unicode, and there we go. And there's an issue with this one, and I think it's because this needs to be static. There we go. Okay, so we can call this uh, from here. So I'm gonna say var result, which is a true or a false. We're expecting that to be returned from, we're expecting that to be true because it will create the folder. Uh, and then we'll say create directory w, and the directory I'm gonna do this in is my temp folder. And I've created a folder called interrupt demo, which I want to use as the target path. And then I'm gonna call the folder, folder created through interrupt. We still have to escape everything, but I'm gonna put in a, an at symbol there to escape those out. And there we go. So we're expecting to get uh, a true result back. And if we look in the target directory, you can see here, it's currently empty, there's no folder with that name. So if I just run that through, it's failed. Apparently, I don't know how to spell kernel. So I'm just gonna change that back. I'm just gonna change that to kernel with an EL on the end, try again. And then if we look at the result, here you can see the result is true. In that folder, it has created uh, the folder that we wanted to create. So you can use that return value to make sure that the function was successful. Now, if we run that again, we would expect that to fail because the folder already exists. This function doesn't overwrite an existing folder. So I'll run it again with that folder existing, step over it and you can see it has returned a false value. So how do we find the error for this? If we didn't know specifically what was the cause, it's quite obvious to us obviously, but for sake of argument, if we wanted to see what actually occurred, how would we do this? Well, there's another parameter in the DLL import attribute we can pass in, which is set last error. And this is a Boolean. We set this to true. It will tell the caller to call the set last error Windows API function. It will give us the last Win32 error. Uh, so we can then access that and say, okay, if this failed, what was the error message? What was the last error message to be recorded? The way we would check this is first to say, if the result is equal to false, then we want to check the error. So we can say var error equals, and then we can use marshal. So this is part of the interrupt services. And then dot get last win32 error. And that will put it into the error variable. And that returns a an error code, which would be an integer. And because this is Windows native libraries, you could look up that error code and it will tell it will tell you what occurred essentially. So again, if we debug that, we're expecting it to fail because the folder already exists. The result is false. 
and then you can see if we go to error, we get 183. So we know that the error code from the Windows API is 183, and therefore we can go and look that up and do some more investigation based on that. So that was an intro to pinvoke, and it is a really useful feature. You do see it in, uh, you actually see it quite a lot in um, applications that need to use that lower level um, Windows API functionality. I see it a lot in automation software that may be trying to use desktop automation to click buttons. Uh, if you're doing this from a .NET application, you can p-invoke into um, functions which allow you to mouse click and target areas of the screen, type into boxes on a screen, all these really powerful automation features. So check it out, take a look at p-invoke and then tell me how you get on with it. Let me know in the comments uh, if you've used this before or if you're using it for the first time, what you've been able to do with it. Of course, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really does help me to bring you lots more great .NET content. Thanks for watching.